Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host, Brian. We're going to finish up today with a special selection, which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. If you have your own song you'd like to submit for special selection, you can find a link to do so in the description below. Today's comes at us from, once again, Stereo Reservoir. Hey, I realized there wasn't any King Gizzard on the channel yet, and I thought of this track immediately. Constant gems from them even today, so hopefully this isn't their last appearance on the channel. Honestly, I don't think this is their first. Um, Something about Vultures comes to mind. Did we check that one out? Is there a song from King Gizzard called Vultures? Um, oh, you know, that might have been a live stream though. Maybe we haven't had them on a channel proper yet. Uh, regardless, I'm pretty sure I know what I'm in store for. Uh, for some reason, I have like psychedelic uh, 70s prog kind of stuff associated with King Gizzard. So, yeah, let's get into it and see what they're bringing to the table today. <laughs> We have a bass, fairly prominent. We have a guitar, drums, and a sitar. I am not a big fan of this video being delayed though. Hearing the snare hit before actually seeing the snare hit is very disorienting. Very nice wide sound stage though. It certainly feels like the music uh, completely envelops me. A lot of compression and reverb put on the lyrics, just kind of leaning into that psychedelic vibe. that bass this was the, the songs aren't really moving anywhere it's sitting very still uh, quarterly Introducing microtonality. I think we have some layering going on as well. In that, we have two sitar lines, and I'm pretty sure we only have one sitar player, so.
Wait, they have two drummers? Did I see that right? Just a lot of chaos in that last section. Really digging into the reverb here. We got the vocalizations. Yeah, got the texture layering there. Okay, so we're vamping back and forth on these two chords, which is movement that we didn't have before. It feels like it's moving into the meditative area, it's just slow burns. Yeah, that little bit of a, a polyrhythm right there. are just sitting in the backgrounds. Just bouncing back and forth between those two notes. And this foundation is very palatable. And we just start layering all sorts of uh, sounds and effects and distortion on top of it. Interesting fuzzy sound there. It's not the first time that uh, quasi-megaphone uh, effect has been utilized on the vocals either. Now see, I see the bells, but I don't hear the bells.
Although they're doing the same thing the uh, hi hat's doing, and it's possible I'm just kind of getting both of them combined. I mean, really interesting use of feedback there as a rhythmic component, but this screeching man. Yeah, see, I really don't hear much different on the hi-hat, uh, and visually he's not doing the bells either, so I wonder if the visuals were just displaced time-wise, uh, or what was going on there, because the visuals haven't always lined up with the audio anyways. It's just so disorienting. Right here, they've just decided to cut out all melodic momentum and just play the foundational bits. right there we saw that snare fill on the left drummer and we certainly didn't have that so yeah the visuals are not always indicative of what's happening a lot of oddities going on here kind of digging into a little bit of dissonance our repeating element the reverb on the guitar is not perfectly in line with the, the heartbeat of the song, so we're getting a little bit of dissonance rhythmically there as well. the bass still just hammering home that one note. Well, we do bounce back and forth between two chords here, so two notes.
falling apart right here. Okay. I kind of thought the song was going to end there. I don't know how close we are to the ending, but... I was not expecting it to line back up. I mean, it's a neat sound effect. It feels like something washing over me, but man. Alright, I mean, I foresee this being an exceptionally short analysis right here, because there really isn't a lot going on here that I can talk about. Uh, a lot of this is just... Well, let's get into it. <laughs> There's two parts of the song. We have our first, what, like three minutes of the song that was... Uh, head on and uh, this last forever of the song called pill uh, we started out the track sort of uh, well we started out head on with a bit of a slower paced and just very meditative our bass was just boom 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 just laying into it constantly hitting that note um and we had our drums which were kind of had a chill laid back drumming just uh a slower tempo lighter vibe and we had a bunch of vocals i don't really th did we have vocals in the in the faster part on pill um I'm not sure. I remember vocalizations. I don't know if I remember words. Um, but we had a story being told here. Uh, something along the lines of needing to screw my head back on, I think is what he said. And, uh, you know, we had the sitar just kind of bouncing back and forth between a few notes. We had our guitars uh, basically just laying down some foundational chord ideas. And it was... For the most part, a fairly typical psychedelic rock track. Uh, very atmospheric, not really digging too much into melodic work, just really laying down a groundwork foundation of, uh, you know, lots of reverb and width. And uh, I, me I mentioned that there's some really nice sound staging here. It felt like the song was enveloping me. Uh, and this did not last long, though. Like I said, two, three minutes, maybe tops. And then we moved on the pill. And that's really all I have to say about Head On. It stuck on one chord. Everybody had one job. And they all filled it. The drums kept the rhythm. The guitars kept the, the basic chord. Um, our sitar gave the sitarness. I mean, that's all it really did through the whole track was just bring about this, uh, you know, this timbre that we associate with, well, nowadays, thanks to a lot of its use in psychedelic and prog rock, a meditative state, right? I don't really think it did anything uh, really folky from its culture. It really didn't do anything rocky that, you know, we would attribute uh, rock composition to the instrument. It sort of just bounced back and forth between two notes and contributed its timbre. 
to the sound. Uh, and moreover, its cultural context. Like I said, its use in a lot of psychedelic music has sort of cemented it as that psychedelic instrument. Um, so its job was really just to continue to uh, <laughs> be a, a cultural stand-in for the phenomenon of meditation and higher understanding. Um, and then our bass just held and played a note. And our vocalist told a story over it. That was the entirety of Head On. Uh, I think there were a couple of guitar licks in there that kind of just uh, created a little bit of diversity uh, against our lead um, our lead vocal melody and just the monotony of everything else in the band. But again, Head On quickly phased out and we moved into Pill abruptly. If I remember correctly, we were just smooth sailing one minute and then driving the next. And Pill is what we call a slow burn or... In this case, a jam. Uh, it harkens back to jam bands of the 70s, which sort of just do stuff for a very long time. It's sort of like a very long jazz solo section. Every foundational instrument has their job. Our drums keep the tempo, very fast pace. Um, was it like eighth notes on the... Yeah, eighth notes on the hi-hat. Uh, we got a snare on like uh, two and four, I think. That's pretty much it. Just this constant forward drive for the next 15 minutes of the track. Or I guess uh, maybe 13 minutes of the track. Our bass takes one note. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Eighth notes occasionally moves to quarter notes. Occasionally plays nothing. And there is one moment in here where we bounce between two chords and the bass gets to play a second note. Same rhythm though. And so that's the bass's job is just to fill in the low end. We have some guitars. Their job is just to fill space. They're constantly strumming. Uh, quarter notes, I think. Maybe eighth notes on a chord. Just keeping the energy going. And then we have our vocalizations that come in every once in a while. The falsetto oohs or ahs. I don't remember what it was. And our... Uh, and the vocalist also plays guitar and typically lines up exactly what they're doing. Doing some uh, textural layering. Where they'll sing the same part as the guitar. So you get the guitar's timbre and texture with their vocals. And you get this nice little harmony there. Then there is the final instrument, well, the sitar, which just continues to do what it's already done and bounce back and forth between two or three notes ad nauseum. Not really contributing to the rockness of the band, but contributing to the meditative spirituality of it based on our cultural understanding of the sitar and how it's been used in the past in, uh, you know, prog rock and psychedelic rock's history. Uh, the final instrument, though, the one that does something different than everyone else, is our texture guitar. The texture guitar is exactly what it sounds like. It creates textures. Sometimes it utilizes reverb, sometimes it uses distortion, sometimes it uses feedback. It just creates sounds. But, of course, we can't stay on these sounds for too short of a time. Every new idea must be accompanied for several minutes. And this is where the song begins to fall apart for me, personally. I'm not a fan of slow burns. I'm not a real big fan of jam bands. Um, and here's why. Okay, so I, I don't know if I've explained this before. I prefer intention. And that's not to say that this is intentionless, but it's intentions... Okay, so maybe intention's not what I prefer. I prefer direction. Because the intention here is to fully explore a single sound. And they achieve that 100%. I'm not a fan of fully exploring a single sound for 10 plus minutes long. Just like I'm not a fan of watching a 5 hour film. If not every single scene or collection of scenes uh, act, we can call that is designed to push our audience towards the finale. 
There's a reason that in a lot of film we have deleted scenes that they might film four or five hours worth of footage and over half of it ends up on the cutting room floor because it takes away from the pacing of the film, removes intentionality, or not intentionality, the direction of the film. Uh, it might muddy up the uh, thematic aspects of the film. There's a lot of reasons to remove elements. And this would be the musical equivalent of just releasing that complete uncut footage. Yes, technically you're getting a more comprehensive view of what the creators wanted to do with this sound space, or film in the metaphor, but it lacks pacing and direction. It sort of meanders in some places, and not everything is there for the benefit of the impact of the song's themes. Um, so I think that I got the gist of this track by minute five or six, and I don't think that the next 10 minutes really changed my understanding of it. So it felt like it was lacking meaning. No, 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 no. I know people are about to hit in the comments, bro, you don't even understand meditative music. I get it. But you also have to... Okay, so I, I'm going to help out. I'm going to like help myself understand and maybe help you guys understand my point of view here. This is meditative music, or at least that's how I envision it. That's how I envision a lot of people who listen to it might interact with it. It helps them, you know, turn off all of the outside stimuli of the world. And maybe they put their headphones on or crank their speakers up and sit in a comfy beanbag or something and forget about their worries and just allow the music to take them on a journey. I totally understand that that is a way that people interact with music. To me, that is a functional use of the music. It is uh, a music for a given function to help one meditate or relax or calm down or clear their minds. I approach music both in critical, here doing these reactions, and casually, on my own, typically as art, which means that I view them uh, and my biases towards them are going to be based in how they work within themselves, not what they can do for me. So, I can totally understand that this song loses a lot of its meditative usefulness if it were only five minutes long. But from an artistic perspective... Assuming that the song is designed to tell a story, which of course, I don't believe it is, but that's how I tend to view music, and I understand it is limited. It makes it difficult to speak about long-form, jammy, psychedelic, uh, meditative tracks like this. This is a, something I've had a problem with, even going all the way back to checking out Tools and Numa and having negative uh, comments to make about the super long bridge section that I felt didn't really go anywhere. Um, I need, or I perceive that every section should be utilized to craft the song's vision and to tell its story. And here it felt like it told its story and then repeated the last sentence over and over to fill a novel rather than being a short story. And that's what it feels like to me. The entire last nine, ten minutes of the track feels like padding because the story is told, they're just reiterating themselves over and over and over, sometimes changing a word in the sentence, but for the most part, not saying anything new. And I really hope that that helps, especially longtime fans, understand the resistance and friction I have towards these slow burns. Uh, it isn't necessarily that I always need the song to be moving forward. I don't need, uh, you know, car bomb or between the buried and me and every single every single thing I listen to in fact I often find that to be overwhelming but I do need everything to be moving forward in a direction to support the overall story that they're telling and like I mentioned I understand that that is a limited way to view music uh, not every song is designed to tell a story but that is how my brain is wired to work, is that I'm looking for the story in the music. 
And so when I end up listening to a track like this, that ends up being the same thing for a vast majority of the song, where it's more about the band jamming together, or existing together, or creating a sonic uh, texture or atmosphere for the listener to just get involved in and not have to worry about coming out of, I find that they're paced poorly, because I feel that the song is fully done before they the artist decided that the song was actually over. And that's where I'm running into on Pill. I think Head On was interesting. It was decent. Uh, it was well paced. And we got into Pill and I thought it was an interesting thing to go into. Uh, I think thematically it works well as a, uh, a companion piece to Head On. But I also felt that about six minutes into the entire thing, I had heard everything Pill had to offer. And I mean six minutes into the whole thing. So we're talking like three or four minutes into Pill. I had heard everything it had to offer and everything else was just padding. I was waiting for it to get to the ending or the next idea or something. And it never did. And by the end of the song, I said, well, they didn't really present me with anything new. Why would we continue on like this? And of course, you know, it's they're, they're going for a very different direction a different intentionality than telling a story and I, like i understand that fundamentally my brain doesn't understand it i was very bored through most of this um and so yeah i just want to kind of clarify that hopefully it helps you guys understand where i come from on these uh slow burns and give you guys a little insight into my mind and also tell you that i do understand and appreciate uh y'all's perspective uh, you know, the people who really enjoy this kind of music uh, or these long form slow burns. I, I do my best after reading all these comments to really see the music through your perspective. And while I appreciate it as a valid way to listen to music, of course, there's no right way to listen to music, just like there's no right way to make music. I just my brain is not wired that way. Um, so I figured this would be a really good song to dive into that because everything kind of clicked for me here in, in hopefully a way that I can say it to you guys and um, hopefully help you understand. Um, so with that said, I think that wraps up the analysis. I explained what happened on Head On. I explained what happened on Pill. Uh, I do want to say one thing before we dive into the lyrics, though is that I really enjoyed some of the inventive ideas they had going on in Pill. Um, particularly one that stood out to me was utilizing feedback as a rhythmic structure. Uh, you know, I've heard feedback used as a texture. You know, you hit your chord, you turn around, you point your guitar at the, you know, amp or whatever, and then you back off and you get that, that, that fuzzy warmth plus a little bit of that that sharp pitch and then you pull off and you go you know you finish out the the riff or the song or the section or whatever it's a momentary texture usage um, but watching the dude constantly move his guitar away and toward in like the circular manner to create a rhythmic component to the song through that screech is actually very genius again very abrasive to my ears. I really did not like listening to it, but I really appreciate the inventiveness of it. Um, oh, there is one more thing that I want to talk about here before we get into the lyrics is vibe, right? Before we get into the lyrics, I want to tell you guys what I felt listening to this song. This song's about drugs, isn't it? <laughs> um... So the music video is about dissociation. That's the best I can get out of it. Um, we constantly see two versions of pretty much everybody, sometimes four versions of the video. The audio and the video are sometimes displaced, sometimes they're in line. Um, and that goes along with the music as well. It's all very psychedelic and meditative. And uh, I mean, some of it could be pure meditation, just achieving that higher understanding but to me the music feels like what if drugs was uh represented sonically and uh, of course you know the song's called pill and the one line i picked up in the first track was i need to help get my head screwed on straight or something like that um 
which again, disassoci disassociative ideas, right? Having your body split apart into multiple pieces. Um, and then, so pill is a lot of very psychedelic reverb filled uh, sections that for the most part are palatable, but occasionally will bring in these odd dissonant ideas. Uh, sometimes it's a guitar just kind of wailing on the side. Sometimes the song just starts to completely fall apart. And to me, like this is what I would kind of assume sonically would represent uh, the parts of a drug trip where things start to go a little sour. Maybe your brain, uh, you know, isn't in that positive, happy place anymore. And now it's kind of like dipping into some sadness or fear or anxiety. And of course the drugs are amplifying that. And I really felt at the end, like it was just going to not at the end, like two minutes before the end, when the song started to fall apart and everything was breaking, like one, I could have taken this as, uh, you know, coming down from the high, right. And returning back to the mundanity and, uh, pain of existence, <laughs> And no, we got right back into it. I mean, I, I guess we could view it as taking another hit of whatever drug and bringing the high back. But it's really interesting that they decided not to go that route and end the song on this deconstruction and to go right back into the, uh, you know, the full idea and go back into full swing for another two minutes or something like that. Um, but yeah, th that's that's the vibe I get from this. This is this is a drug trip in sonic form. Um, kind of all of the aspects of it, the meditation, the meditative element, the uh, higher understanding, being able to see extra stuff, man, uh, opening my third eye. And, uh, you know, also the, the negative aspects of it, though, as well. Um, just kind of bringing it all together in one song or one idea. I guess it's technically two songs. So... Yeah, that's what I've got about the music, the individual elements of it, the overall vibe, and hopefully just a little bit of help connecting with you guys and giving you a, a moment to understand where I come from on tracks like this. I really do try to come at them on their own terms, right, and try to listen to them through other people's perspectives. That's really hard to do, by the way. <laughs> Uh, I do appreciate what they do and what they're going for. It's just not my kind of music. So, on to the lyrics. We're going to start with Head On. Just yesterday, I sat across from my legs. They weren't connected to me, and I couldn't see because my eyes weren't in me. Hold me up straight while, my, while I screw my head on. Yeah, I mean, disassociative right there. Uh, and I definitely, I mean... I was going to say, definitely think we're talking about drug use here, but uh, nothing there really mentions it uh, per se. But yeah, sitting across from your legs, your eyes not in your head, needing to screw your head back on. Yeah, definitely elements there of um, disassociating with one's body. Just yesterday, I held the cup to my lips, pouring it deep in my throat, filling up me like a black enemy. Hold me up straight while I screw my head on. That's it. That is all of head on. So maybe not drug related, but then we get to pill. Uh, bridge one is, yep. <laughs> I vaguely remember hearing that. Uh, I think that was also when we had, uh, I think that was our first instance of the megaphone sound. Uh, the high compression uh, kind of centered vocal style. Refrain one is just pill, 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 pill. <clears throat> just pill like 50 times uh refrain true refrain two goes into ate the wrong ate the wrong ate the wrong ate the wrong joey <laughs> why is refrain two end with a shout for joey uh then refrain run one goes back to pill 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 we go to bridge two which is one two three four i, I pointed that one out Refrain two, we go back to eight the wrong. Refrain one is pill. And then let it end okay is shouted. Much in the same way that Joey was shouted at the end of that refrain. Uh, so yeah, if we put these together, it says I ate the wrong pill. Which would definitely showcase uh, the intense drive 
coming from the more laid back and chill opening of head on into the rush of pill. Uh, also, ate the wrong one could also mean that it has you know negative interactions. Maybe it's not the way they wanted. Maybe it was a you know uppers and downers. I you know I'm not a drug guy, right? So I'm just kind of <laughs> saying some stuff that I've heard from friends of mine and. Uh, let's be honest, media as well, which is probably not entirely accurate, but different drugs have different effects and I'm sure different people take different drugs for different effects. So if you take the wrong one, it could have a negative aspect to just take you where you don't want to be, which could be those destructive elements in the song that kind of introduce a lot of tension and abrasive elements before returning to the more palatable and albeit fast, but chiller sections. Um, and is that what the whole song is about? It's just a real long jam about sitting around with your buddies and taking drugs. That's what I get out of it. I said this was going to be a short one. It still pulled out 40 minutes, but uh, I feel like a lot of that was just uh, me kind of talking about slow burns in general, not necessarily King Gizzard uh, as a whole. Anyways, those are my thoughts on Head On Slash Pill from King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. The Lizard Wizard. This is where you guys come in. Hit me up with your comments. Let me know what you thought of this one. If you enjoyed it or not. Anything that stood out to you. If you want to comment about my perspective on slow burns and open up a discussion about it, I'm all down for that. As I've said before, I read all your comments and I certainly see people's uh their takes and their perspectives on songs like this that we've done in the past that they've really enjoyed that I just didn't connect with. Um, but I'm always down to talk more about it. I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I really love talking about music and art in general. <laughs> so I have no problem opening up a dialogue that I think could help me or even other people get a, a larger idea and expand our horizons on how people interact with art. So yeah, I'm always down for that. Above the comment section is the description box. You guys know the drill. In there is a link for Linktree. It takes you to this menu. You can pick up some merchandise. You can do some other stuff. Twitter, Patreon, special selections, email, uh, Discord, a bunch of stuff in there. Go ahead and check it out. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for today. We'll be back tomorrow checking out another Big Shift track as well as another special selection. Until next time, remember to be critical but not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.